you mentioned the warning signs that all those people had seen throughout their experiences, like all the election-related violence or other locations as well. Uh, do you believe atro that atrocities like what happened in Rwanda can be prevented by the international community? Because you mentioned the U.S. mobilization there in, in Kenya. Do you think that that same could work with a more international approach? And or does prevention need to come from within the country itself? Or, what's the last part? Or does prevention need to come within the country itself? Well, it, it really has to be, it, it, you really have to support it, encourage it, and protect it in the country itself. Because what happens, as you, as you, in any of these societies, once people start to fear violence, they, the amount of space that they, that they operate in gets, is pretty constrained. So the international community has to be careful not to single out locals, uh, what I call dear hearts in the book, who then become the, the they can then become the, the targets of attacks because the international community thinks they're the answer for things. Uh, but I, I do believe that uh, in places like Rwanda, in, in Kenya, by the way, what ended up happening was there was, there was almost no election-related violence. It didn't mean that the election turned out very well. It was still kind of a, kind of a dissatisfying result. But we weren't picking the candidates, we were doing the rest of it. But what we were able to do was to, just to keep the violence from spreading. So I do think the international community can do a lot, but you've really got to get started earlier, and you've got to get, you have to care more about these issues what ends up happening is if we're doing if we're doing health programs in a country, we just keep doing those things, even though all of this other noise is growing. And for example, Rwanda before the genocide was one of the world's development success stories. It was a major success story. The Chinese had built the stadium, the Chinese had done the roads, the health programs were run by the Europeans, and so actually it was a much more organized country than almost everybody around. But it had this deep-seated political division that nobody was addressing, and I think you've, all, you've always got to pay attention to the politics. And, and when I say politics, it's politics writ large. It's not. It's not that pol politics includes economics, sociology, anthropology. You know, it's, it's what it's uh, the culture of a place. And we can see we can see troubling trend lines in our country uh, right now as well. That certain behaviors. Certain kinds of hate speech, certain kinds of violence are much more broadly accepted. And anybody who thinks it can't happen wherever you are, you shouldn't kid yourselves because I was stunned when my very first trip when I went to, to Sarajevo and to Bosnia, uh, to, uh, two hours before I was sitting in Switzerland, and it was like, you know, it was, I mean, everything was fine. The biggest, the biggest the scariest thing that morning when I flew out of Zurich was that I saw a Herald attic on the street. And I was like, and then, you know, a couple of hours later, you're basically running into a building and you've got black jackets on. And, and so, so that's, so it can be very immediate. So you really do need to pay attention to it. And so the early, the early awareness is hugely important. Um, okay, so. You want to follow up on that? David? Yeah, could you elaborate on some of the warning signs that you talked about? Yeah, I mean, obviously, obviously the behaviors of the political class are really important because they've got, that means they have bases of people who are supporting them. So, uh, so if the political class is, is now performing in a way that seems like, whoa, that's, this was our norm, and now it's out here, that's a big warning sign because it's not like they're doing it because they're just crazy. They actually have people who agree with what they're saying. And uh, so, for example, my very, very first trip I went to Sarajevo, and person after person told me that they never, ever expected that they were going to be attacked by their neighbors. So, just said, I can't believe that my neighbor attacked me. or. I talked to a woman this week and there's a conference in Washington. She grew, she grew up in Sarajevo. Her family was totally intermarried. So they had, and 
She has not talked to her Serb relatives since the mid-1990s. And she's a peace builder. So she's actually tried to talk to these people. She passes them on the street. They don't know each other. I mean, this is, this is now 24 years later. So, I mean, those are, some of the, those, are, those are pretty common behaviors. And then the same thing in Rwanda, people were stunned that they were singled out, and that, or that somebody came to their school or came to their came to their home, and uh, and and, uh, and murdered them. Uh, so those are so I would say those are a couple quick early warning things I can.